Welcome back to Warthon and welcome aboard the French P63C5, which is an aircraft that I quite enjoy, and not just for the reason that it's, well, I'd say completely under tiered. It has a battle rating of 4.0, and it should have a battle rating of at least 5.0, according to its performance, what it can do, and what it usually faces. Now, here we are, of course, on a French-American um, team, together with some Spitfires against the Germans, of course, and the Germans are your major opponent. And so the entire discussion that I make around this aircraft is, well, around the fact that I'm facing, in 90% of the cases, the Germans, and in 10% of the cases, the, well, Italians, and I think the Italians give you much more trouble than the Germans. It's just a simple fact in my experience. And I cannot speak for anybody else. I just can talk about what I experience in a battle. This is just how it goes. Don't sue me for it. It's just a fact. Um, sometimes it seems like people play different games because they come up with so different experiences in my comment section that I really have to wonder sometimes um, if I play a different game or they play a different game. Um, meaning no offense, but really when it comes to map rotation, I had a video um, a few days ago where I got a lot of response about it and a lot of people agree with me on, on the tank map rotation, which is really strange. So there is that. Back to the P-63. It's the French aircraft. It's a French aircraft, or at least it is in the French tech tree. And the um, actual nation that um, built those aircraft were, of course, the Americans. Now, with the Americans, we have practically beginning with the P-39s, uh, with the N-0, Q-5, and so on. Um, the predecessor model, I'd guess, and the P-63 with the A-5, the A-10, and the C-5, well, they are kind of um, then improved versions. For the other nation that it was exported to with the land lease were, of course, the Russians. They have a lot of aircraft with 37 millimeters high velocity guns. I will come back to this in a moment. In their own tech tree, Yak 90 and so forth, even 45 millimeter uh, guns, Yak 9K and so forth. Um, but then they also have a lot of the premium uh, versions, or at least American planes, which are premium aircraft, P 39K1 and uh, multiple other aircraft. Um, of the P-63 variant. Uh, I have the C-5, the A-10, and of course the A-5. And they are completely under-tiered, all of them in my opinion. They have all, or at least the P-63s have all a battle rating of 4.0, and they should again deserve all 5.0, especially how the flight model feels. Now, the aircraft that I'm flying here is not fully upgraded, so please keep that in mind, as you will see later on in the post-battle results. Um, and so, it's not really straightforward when I talk about it, it's not that obvious. It has a decent climb rate, it has insane dive speeds, it can maneuver quite well, it has a decent roll rate, and let's talk about the armament to come back to this. Now, your primary primary armament, in my opinion, are actually the four 12.7mm M2 Browning machine guns, which you have 900 rounds in, whereas the central mounted of them have a bit more ammunition than the gun pod versions under each wing, there is one. And you also have a 37mm M10 cannon with 58 rounds. 58 rounds is quite a lot for a um, gun that big in such an aircraft. Now, where did they get the place? Well, that might be in the um, aircraft, how it's built. And that is because the engine, which is an Allison V1710 um, 11.7 12 cylinder inline, V shaped um, water cooled engine, is actually behind the pilot. So you have this weird center of gravity. But in the game, it handles really really nicely and so you have in front of the pilot quite a lot of room for a lot of the ammunition 
for the M10 37mm gun, so this might explain it. Furthermore, if you desire, you can research a bomb pod, I guess, for three 500 pound bombs. And that means, again, this aircraft has potentially more ground striking potential than the best fighter in this respect for the Italians. But then again, you know, it's American origin, so Americans with their ground striking capabilities, they're quite good in this respect. So what you saw me doing here the first five minutes was climbing, side climbing, observing what the enemy is doing. I actually wanted to fight a lot of the enemies um, at high altitude. Well, this aircraft is also pretty good. Um, I cannot really give you any, you know, experiences at eight or seven thousand meters, but six thousand, five thousand meters, it just handles quite well, even not fully upgraded. So, um, if you position yourself well, if you position yourself in such a way that you can um, deal with the enemy one at a time, you have a pretty good aircraft. This is not a Griffin Spitfire, this is not a Bearcat. Um, obviously those aircraft have higher battle rating, but uh, you know what I'm talking about with the extreme sharp turning, with the insane energy retention. But this aircraft still, for 4.0, is way under tiered. It deserves at least 5.0. Um, you could easily get it up to 5.3 and it still would work in the hands of a, well, average pilot, I'd say. Now, in head-ons, it's quite a mixed bag. Why? Because with the 50 cals, you don't have the knockout punch. Yes, you can uh, hit your victim, so to speak, with the 37, and if you get a hit that actually doesn't spark or something like this, and actually goes where you aim it, then you're, obviously you can take out your opponents with one shot, and it's deeply satisfying, I have to say. It. And also you have a lot of ammunition, 58 rounds, with that low rate of fire, it's, it works, you know, it really works. And now as you can see, I decided myself to go in fully and um, yeah, to join the furball, the dogfighting, so to speak. But I noticed that somebody was uh, swooping in on my tail, so I just zoomed through and let the P-47 in the rear, well, kind of be the distraction. I turn around, rip my flaps, but it does not really matter. And now it's obviously a decision making who to go um, for and how to engage them. Little burst rolling out of the way and you could see how long the shell was actually in the air. I tried to zoom climb here this German BF109 that was previously on my tail but I'm too fast and so um, yeah I tried to re-engage him and you can see the plane just handles quite nicely. Um, it's again not something like the Japanese A7M1 but it, it works in a different way, okay? And again, I have to stress this out. If this would be facing a lot of the Russian planes, if it would face a lot of the British or hell, as I mentioned, just the Japanese planes, it would have stiffer competition in terms of dogfighting, in terms of energy retention, weaponry and so forth. But against the Germans, I just know the boundaries of uh, German planes. Obviously that was a kill assist because, you know, he was not quite on fire enough. So thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> but hey, whatever. I counted as a kill for myself. So at plus one so forth for the post battle results. I really butchered this up at the moment against this Tau 154. Um, he did his best in terms of defensive flying. Ultimately, I would get him right here if I wouldn't be a bad pilot like I am. And I get another kill assist. So thanks again. So, and that's actually the engagement, right? Uh, not quite well. So this is where it now goes into the late um, gameplay and where we have to kind of talk about the plane in the long term. Do you really suffer from overheat? Well, a little bit, but it's controllable, especially with manual engine control, which I use always while climbing and so on. A bit of long range shooting here, trying to make this guy turn, but well, we will see how it goes. Um, then take 30 minutes of fuel, because 20 minutes, which I took in this battle, is, well, your engine is quite thirsty and it um, goes through the fuel like uh, Russians through 
buying IS-6s, I guess. So you really have to um, work out. And you know, this time uh, that was a bit of greediness from me, a bit of bad turning, and I rammed this guy. I took no real damage, but I feel sorry for my teammate that he didn't get the kill. Ultimately, yes, the enemy is dead, but my teammate actually deserved the kill. That was pure greediness on my behalf, so sorry about this. Um, as somebody that plays the game for so long, I shouldn't do this, but I get tricked into doing this all the time. Again, I'm not the best pilot in the world, and there are better pilots out there, for sure, but I do my best. And ultimately, I wanted to get the kill so I get more RP, more silver lines to spade this plane faster. And there is, well, actually one of the planes that is worth talking about, the BV-238. The BV-238 is the German six-engined bomber, and you can really say that's a heavy bomber. It has nasty defensive gunners, and whatever you do, do not sit on the tail of this behemoth and well I have actually the weapon to take on this giant with my 37 millimeter I had a lot of ammunition and uh, well if they work they rip out big holes out of the fuselage the wings and whatnot so I tried to bring myself into position I put myself in between his flying path and the airfield that he wants to go back to and uh, yeah, I want to end this quickly for him. Um, BV-238s, well, they are planes that separate good players versus not so experienced players. BV-238s can rack up five, six, seven kills without problem if you sit on the tail of it and don't know what you're doing. So here I see, I turn in, he sees it, he tries to uh, turn, but he's too slow. He has not flown his aircraft in a way that would allow him to um, actually bring the plane around quite fast enough. And I rip away his tail and end it in a not so dangerous way for me. Ultimately, he tries to spray into my raw direction, but he is in a spiral of death and whatnot. He goes down. And I have now not a lot of fuel left. Now I cut here out the part where I go um, ultimately then back to the airfield, but we shadowed the last enemy player. And well, after quite some time where I observed, where I observed him circling his airfield, I said to myself, I have to go back to the airfield to get some fuel. The ammunition was not critical for a last kill, I'd say. But, you know, better safe than sorry. Add some uh, extra minutes of gameplay, obviously. I mean, I cut out here like five, six minutes of going back and repair and going back up again. So, ultimately, I like this plane. I think it's heavily under-tiered in terms of performance, especially when it's uh, fully upgraded. The most successful squads that I come across are flying the uh, A-10 and C-5, on the Russians, so the reward versions or the reward premium versions, they go up in squads and they just annihilate uh, the uh, opposing team. So, ultimately, um, I took off in the air again and I spotted him. I saw the black dots uh, circling around. Later on, it was confirmed by the kill messages. He wants to go after the vehicles to actually trying to win. First of all, he had the opportunity like five minutes ago to just simply bail out. And now um, I go into a semi head on. I try to fake him into following me up and I just go simply up. And he came actually surprisingly close with his shot. So that was not the best way to do it. And, you know, as good as the Heinkel 219 is, it's not a King Cobra. He has no defensive gunners. Um, I try to snipe him with the 37. Ultimately, I kill him. And that was my fifth kill. A few assists, going back to base once. Not ground striking really, uh, except for two, you know, mediocre AAA positions. And yeah, that's the battle. The tickets will bleed down in just a moment. So let's have a quick look at the post battle results.
And as we can see, I earned quite a bit, 132,000 silver lines and 8,300 vehicle research points. That's a really great result. Also a survivor award, first in team by quite a bit, for 5 kills, 2 assists and 2 ground units. Yeah, it was really a great battle in this respect. Um, I can really recommend this plane, but then again, it's heavily under tiered and you know, I think this is a common theme for a lot of the aircraft that are in the French tech tree that have their origin in the American tech tree. So that's it for me today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Please give this video a like with it. Subscribe if you want to see more and we'll see each other in the skies of War Thunder.